Double checking. It's now time for member statements. The member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today to celebrate Netherlands Liberation Day. Seventy years ago, at the end of the Second World War, brave soldiers liberated the Netherlands, and many of them came from right here in Canada. The Canadian Armed Forces gave my parents and our country back our freedom. I remember my mother's stories of the jubilation when the soldiers entered the village. Those Canadian soldiers are the reason my family later came to Canada. And those soldiers are the reason that Canada and the Netherlands have such a strong friendship to this day. The people of the Netherlands still remember the sacrifices our Canadian soldiers made. Young people in Holland grew up hearing the stories to this day, come out to parades and events to honour the Canadian Armed Forces. Every year on May the 5th, the Netherlands Celebration Liberation Day, it's the celebration of freedom and all, and all of those who put their lives on the line to help a nation. It's also the reason that Ontarians celebrate Dutch Heritage Month every May. This year is even more special as we celebrate the 70th anniversary of liberation. On the weekend, I was honoured to walk in the Veterans Parade with the Netherlands Council General and Gerard van Leeuwen. It was part of the festival that saw thousands come out to celebrate the veterans and all those who liberated our country. As a Dutch Canadian and a person born liberated because of their efforts, I want to say to those veterans, wij zullen altijd worden verschillend. Thank you. We will always be indebted to you. Thank you. <laughs> member's statement, the member from London, Vanja. Speaker, I rise today to draw your at our attention to Children's Mental Health Week in Ontario. The reason we mark this important week is to promote awareness of the signs of child and youth mental health difficulties while seeking to decrease the stigma associated with mental health problems. The facts are that one in five children struggle with mental health problems that translates to more than 500,000 children in Ontario alone. Our children need to know that mental health problems can happen to anyone, regardless of age or circumstances. In fact, 70% of mental health problems and illnesses have their onset during childhood or adolescence. The good news is mental health issues can be managed and overcome. The sooner we can get our children help, the quicker they can begin to heal. My concern is that while mental illness con constitutes more than 15% of the disease burden in Canada, these illnesses receive only 5.5% of our health care dollars. I want to acknowledge the parents, volunteers and mental health service providers, particularly Children's Mental Health Ontario, for their tireless efforts to improve the lives of Ontario's children and youth. Lastly, I want to let our children suffering from mental health problems know that we care and we support, your every, ev we support you every step of the way through this difficult journey. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, today we join people from all around the world to recognize the International Day of the Midwife. I know I speak for all caucus when I say all MPPs are aware of the critical role that midwives play in strengthening our community health care system and to the well-being of thousands of women and newborns in our province. I also saw firsthand the excellent service and reassurance that midwives provided to my family when my daughter welcomed my grandson into the world on July 4, 2013. The midwife service was outstanding, not just before the birth, but during during it as well and after care my daughter and her son received at their home. Here in Ontario, there are about 760 registered midwives and 30 Aboriginal midwives providing maternity care to support low-risk birth. The Ontario Midwifery Program is growing by 90 registered midwives each year as new graduates enter the profession. Ontario's midwives are a critical partner in our primary care system. Since beginning, uh, becoming a regulated health profession in 1994, they have delivered over 150,000 babies and 35,000 of those babies were born at home. Working with the Association of Ontario Midwives, our government, as stated in our recent budget, will be expanding our support to grow the number of Aboriginal midwives in Ontario. We look forward to that program. I would like to sincerely thank our midwives for all of your hard, hard work and dedication to Ontario families. Thank you. 
Further member statements? The member from Lanark, Frontenac, Lennox, and Addington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I'd like to bring to the attention of the House a struggle a constituent of mine, Dale Hilton, is having with the Ministry of Government and Consumer Services. Mr. Hilton operates a bio-cremation service that offers an eco-friendly alternative to flame-based cremation. The process he uses is approved in Quebec and Saskatchewan, as well as many U.S. states. However, due to the meddling of a senior Ministry of Employee in the approval pr process for this method, method, Mr. Hilton has been unable to provide his service to the community. What's concerning about the interference is that the Ministry employee has usurped the ju jurisdiction of the municipality by, by requesting local municipal staff to withhold granting Mr. Hilton's municipal license, which is required to start the approval process. I don't understand why one of the ministry staff would punish and create such hardships for a small local Ontario business, which is providing an environmentally friendly, widely approved method for a service whose demand is surely to increase. This is a prime example of how the Liberal government is the single largest obstacle and impediment to permitting two new technologies and new businesses to flourish in this province. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The month of May is marked as Lyme Disease Awareness Month and a time to remember the thousands of Canadians who are affected by Lyme disease and what we can do to help them. I have heard so many tragic stories from across Ontario of people who were unable to access necessary treatment because of how poorly we understand this disease. Lyme disease is a significant and growing issue across our province. Lyme disease is a tick-borne bacterial infection. Lyme-carrying ticks are on the rise across Canada, with the highest rates of human-acquired cases in Ontario. If left undiagnosed and untreated, Lyme can mimic other diseases like ALS, multiple sclerosis, and lupus. I am encouraged that my motion calling for the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care to develop a comprehensive and integrated Lyme disease strategy for Ontario passed unanimously last November. Those in the Lyme community, as well as those who are informed and concerned about Lyme disease, are eagerly waiting for an update on the progress of this strategy. Tomorrow, many people from Ontario Lyme Alliance, Can Lyme, the G. Magnota Foundation for Vector Borne Diseases, amongst others, in the healthcare and veterinarian community, will be joining us here at Queen's Park to acknowledge Lyme Awareness Month and once again bring attention to this terrible disease and voice our concerns for a rapid implementation of the Lyme Awareness Prevention Strategy. May is Lyme Awareness Month. Ribbons up. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Ottawa, only know. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, several community events. Vendredi soir, je... Friday night, I went to the chorus of young people from saint Seraphim marion in Orleans. 55 uh, retired people uh, sing in this chorus. Councillor uh, from Cumberland Ward, Stephen Blais, hosted his annual ladies' tea, and I was happy to meet many members of our community. Saturday night was the first edition of Sapphire Night, where six francophone uh, women were recognized for their commitment in sport, environment, education, and business. Join my colleague John Fraser at the annual hike for hospice in Ottawa, the May Court Hospice. They were raising awareness about the importance of quality and of life care for our aging and supporting their families through the journey. After this, my staff, family, and I spent the afternoon bowling, bowling in honor of Jane Osborne, who took his own life at the age of 18. His family and friends organized this third annual event to raise awareness about youth mental health and funds for a nonprofit called Partners for Mental Health. It was a truly inspiring event and a reminder to support our friends who may be struggling. It was a wonderful weekend in Orleans, Mr. Speaker. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Member Stavis, member from... You have no problem with questions, I have, I have, remembering. You're darn right I don't have any problem. <laughs>
Prince Edward Eighth. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the words of grade six student Matthew Beale of George Vanier School in Belleville, first responders in our communities help all those in need every day, and their importance cannot be measured. I'm grateful to each one of them that have helped my family, my friends, and me. My colleague, Frank Cleese, the former member for Newmarket Aurora, passed legislation in December 2013, declaring the first day of May in honor of our paramedics, police, and firefighters. They're the first on scene at most emergencies, and the professionals tasked with keeping our communities safe. To mark the occasion, my constituency office ran a coloring and essay contest at schools across Prince Edward and Hastings counties last week. The judges, some local police and fire chiefs, had a tough job choosing our winners, and on First Responders Day on Friday, we surprised the contest winners in their classrooms with prizes for their creative pictures and their short stories, and young Mr. Beale was one of those winners. Other awards went to Julianne Wade of St. Paul's Secondary, who no longer has to share the family iPad. She has one of her O's now for her great essay on first responders. At Sir John A. Macdonald Public, we surprised grade two student Daniel Power and grade three student Maya Hubble with gifts from the Insurance Bureau of Canada. Acting Inspector Chris Barry of the Belleville Police Service spoke with the students about the rewarding parts of his job and encouraged the youngsters to consider becoming a first responder when they're a little bit older because of how rewarding it is for him. So thanks to my constit staff, our partners in the contest at IBC, but especially we thank our first responders right across the province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member of Statements, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise in the House this afternoon uh, to speak about the Jeans Walk that I conducted in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore this past Saturday. I was joined by about 80 people uh, to walk through what was termed the farewell tour for Spaghetti Junction. Mr. Speaker, uh, Spaghetti Junction is the affectionate term for the six points interchange in the Etobicoke City Centre in my riding, the intersection of Dundas, Kipling and Bloor, uh, a 1960s era interchange in the middle of our community that was designed simply to speed traffic along at the edge of the city back then. But now it's at the heart of Etobicoke, and uh, over 14 years I had the pleasure of leading an exercise uh, to redesign, replan that area. And the City of Toronto has begun the infrastructure work, a $50 million project, to transform the area into a vibrant pedestrian community. Mr. Speaker, the province also is investing in this area through some very strategic investments in public transit infrastructure. They help fund a new entrance into Kipling subway station, and soon we'll be starting a new Kipling mobility hub. And Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud that this exercise has been uh, uh, seen as an international best practice. I was very proud uh, to go to Harvard Graduate School of Design and deliver a lecture on this initiative. The residents that uh, met with me this past Saturday for this tour, uh, they were very happy to see the transformative change that's going to be coming to Etobicoke City Centre, the result of good planning and good investments in infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member from Mississauga Streetsville. Well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, the first Sunday in May represents the founding anniversary of two dynamic, growing, and caring faith communities in western Mississauga the Praise Cathedral Worship Centre in Meadowvale and the Hindu Heritage Centre in Streetsville. Each celebrated its 10th anniversary in 2015, each celebrated it last Sunday, May the 3rd. At Praise, the congregation comes together from all across North America and the Caribbean. Featuring, without question, the premier choir in Mississauga, praise is an experience in faith, song and joy for its growing congregation and for visitors alike. At the Hindu Heritage Centre, Mississauga has gained a landmark temple and a Hindu congregation that has brought some of the best of Indian culture, language and tradition to Streetsville. India's Consul General Akhilesh Mishra joined me and Mississauga Streetsville MP Brad Butt at a flag raising and a celebration of Indian music and dance. Premier Kathleen Wynne attended the 10th anniversary celebration at the Hindu Heritage Centre along with MPPs Dipika Damarla and Amrit Mangat. It was a very special day for the faithful in Western Mississauga and I was proud to play a part in it. Thank you, Speaker. I thank all members for their statements. I beg to